Something's missing. Hmm. Oh, there it is. This is uh, the LC575, and some of you might know this, but I have, um, I decided to recap the logic board. This machine had been having some issues lately. It's been freezing up. And it's usually, when you find a Mac with cap issues, capacitor problems, there's usually more than one symptom. It's not always one thing. And with this machine, it started to progress. It started out with a couple of random freeze-ups, which was unusual because it's pretty reliable otherwise. And then it progressed on to the floppy drive stopped working. And I thought that was strange. And then I went to go boot it up, and it wouldn't boot up with a zip drive attached. I'm like, this is weird. So I pull the board out, and I look at the caps, in the area around the caps, and I had already cleaned the board once when I got it. And I noticed a greasy film surrounding the capacitors. In fact, I have another board I can show you, so you can actually get a look at what this looks like if you have a machine with this problem. So here is an LC motherboard. This is for a Macintosh LC. And there's a cluster of capacitors near the audio circuit right here. And you can see a slight greasy, dusty film. It's a good sign that these caps are all leaking. And what happens is their electrolyte leaks onto the board and it does two things. It begins to short out components. If enough electrolyte pools around a certain chip, or even between underneath the cap, it can start shorting out under the cap. And it's not a short, it's not a dead short that would cause, or usually would cause a component downstream to blow up, or upstream as the case may be. Um, sometimes it's just, it's just enough to cause a nuisance problem. You'll notice right here we have the main system processor. This is the 68020 processor. And you'll notice that that, that uh, magic juice, that electrolyte, is leaking right here. Now this, this board, I don't even know if this board works. I actually bought this board from the Tech Knight um, for a very small amount of money to fix my LC2. The LC2 is what we're going to talk about today. The LC2 has a blown micro microphone, I almost said Microsoft, a blown microphone amp, I suspect. And I think I know why it happened, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But for now, let's finish up the, um, the LC575, or the Performa 575, same machine. Uh, let's take a look at the board. Now, I have already recapped this board. And let's take a look, see how I did. This one was easy. There's only three, four, there's like 11 or 12 caps on this entire board. Look at that. Brand new board. Looks, it looks new. This is actually the best one I've done so far. Usually the last one you do is the best one you do because you get practice. You get a feel for how much heat, how long, how much flux, how much solder. You get a better idea of how to do the job correctly. In fact, I think I got these caps on straighter than the factory did on this board here. Look at those are crooked. <laughs> I'm getting good. I'm getting really good at this. Um, I've already confirmed I actually let the machine burn in, so to speak, for a couple of hours, and it did just fine. But then I noticed something else. After I recapped the main board, the display uh, geometry, specifically the, the convergence of the electron guns and some other issues started cropping up on the display. So the reason I have the machine open right now is that I've been tweaking some of the uh, adjustments on the um, <clears throat> on the CRT neck and on the um, the neck board itself, and I've gotten those problems sorted out. The display actually looks really good now, uh, but that's going to be temporary because I know where the next step is on this machine. Now, as the electrolyte leaks out of these caps, it does two things. I did mention I mentioned that one thing: it shorts out components but it also causes the value of the capacitor to drift. 
It loses capacitance. It's like when you take the battery acid out of your car battery, what happens? So that can cause more issues. And I think that the combination of the two uh, can really render a system unusable. But what's happening with the CRT caps is they're not leaking, they're not bulging, but their, capaci their capacitance or their value is changing, it's dropping. And what that can do is it can cause um, unstable voltages. Now the voltages in a CRT, the, level, the voltage levels are critical for the, for the whole system to work effectively. So what's happened here is we've got components that are drifting in value. You know, that's normal. That's going to happen with any electronic component, especially a CRT where there's a lot of heat, a lot of voltage, um, and they tend to burn on for hours and hours on end. And I'm missing a screw. Where'd it go? Anyway, so what happens with CRTs, and another thing is because it's a visual component, um, any issue at all will be completely obvious because you're seeing it. And, and if there's a slight problem with the circuitry driving that display, you will notice it because you'll notice it in either ge geometry changes, color changes, um, brightness issues. You know, it runs the gamut. Um, in my case, it's convergence issues, and I think I solved that. I don't have the software to make those adjustments. Um, Apple did release a CRT alignment utility, uh, which runs through a pattern of tests, and you methodically adjust each potentiometer in sequence. Um, I do not have that luxury. I don't have the software. I know it's out there somewhere. Um, I think I found it once, but I was not successful in making a bootable disk. So that sucked. But anyway, I, I did it by eye, and I'm, I have a pretty good eye for detail, so I think I got it. Let me just find that missing screw, and I'll fire it up and see what it looks like. So how do we permanently fix the display? Can it be done? Potentially. Um, and we're going to start, potentially, uh, if, they, if I'm going to leave it alone, unless it gets any worse. And what I'm going to do to rectify the situation is I'm going to recap the entire analog board. It is doable, uh, but it's involved. Um, you've got to remove the analog board from the machine, which has never been done. Well, anyway, so what I did while I was in here, rather than buy the schematic, which I, I think I can get it for this machine, um, I, did, I actually took a, um, an inventory of all the capacitors on the analog board. So if anybody needs that, let me know. Um, the quantity, the voltage, and the capacitance. So I'm going to start ordering replacement capacitors for this thing, and we'll be pulling the analog board. We're going to do all the caps on it. We'll start there, and if any further troubleshooting needs to be done, I might need some assistance uh, for some, from someone who might know what the hell they're doing. Um, but so far, so good. From about from from a viewing from a viewing uh, distance, this screen looks absolutely perfect, um, absolutely fantastic. I am very happy. Um, it looks it looks terrific. Now I want you to know something. Now I did this all by sight or just by by looking at it. Um, I started out by zeroing out all the adjustments, and I worked my way through each one in a in a semi helter skelter fashion um, so I took all the color away I zeroed out all the green red and blue uh, and then I brought them all back in to what I thought looked good enough uh, for my tastes so the LC2 since it's a uh, complete recap it is doing fine with one exception one little detail one minor problem and I'm going to demonstrate it for you right now now I'm going to unplug the microphone, okay? Now this display looks really cool. It's nice and crisp and bright. Very happy with this one. Let's take a look at the microphone, shall we? So I'm going to open up the control panel. I'm going to go to sound. We have plenty of sound. Add. And right now, we should be seeing 
sound coming through this little speaker icon. When I hit the record button, listen to what happens when I play it back. Hear that? That's static. Now it does that whether there's a microphone connected or not. Regardless of what microphone I use, all we get is static. Okay, now this is an LC logic board, as I said earlier. Um, I just got this in the mail today, and this board may work, it may not, I don't care. Um, we're not going to use it, but the LC board, if you'll notice, what makes this one a little bit different, it has the MC68020 versus I think the 68030 processor. Um, it also features two floppy drive connectors because the LC could be ordered with two floppy drives or one floppy and one hard drive. We're going to rob this thing of two components. I'm going to steal the microphone connector because I butchered the one on the LC. I'm going to steal the uh, microphone amplifier circuit, the UB9. It is a 3080M chip. We're going to start with something a little easy. I'm going to do microphone jack. So let's grab that sucker while we can. No, it's not. Now I got a, a comment from one of my coworkers who watches my videos for some strange reason. And he says, you use too much soldering paste. I'm like, well, you know what? It works. It really helps get that heat dispersed nice and evenly. So let's zoom in. Position the board. This is where we're going to be working. Let me, there we go. So let's do that. Well, we un we desoldered just about everything. There's one there's one part here that has a little bit of solder left on it. We're gonna hit that one more time. It was a clean clean removal. Sweet. So what we'll do is we'll straighten out these pins, and then we'll just throw it on the other board. I got a pair of tweezers or a needle nose. We'll we'll do that. Now let's get. All right, so now that we've removed our microphone jack, we'll remove the microphone amp. All right, I'm gonna juice it up. So here's what I think happened to the LC2's microphone amp. I think somebody plugged a set of powered speakers, I'm sorry, a powered, um, I'll backtrack a little bit. This machine was used with a CD300, which supply, it has a, um, an audio out for the CD audio. You're supposed to connect it directly to a set of speakers. And it provides, it, it, it actually it is a, I believe it's a powered uh, amplifier. Well, I think somebody connected that to the microphone jack thinking that that's what it was for. Just a theory. And I think that burned out the, um, the microphone amp. Just a theory. Just a theory. So we need to reuse this chip. We don't want to heat it too much. I've got my soldering and desoldering braid there. Now I'm going to take a... I'm going to use a pair of tweezers. All right, I want to make a point and say that I'm not really focusing on teaching you all how to solder, especially surface mount, because number one, I'm using all the wrong tools because I'm too cheap to buy the right ones, and number two, I'm too lazy to do it the right way. So I do what I've got to do to get my stuff fixed. I'm not doing this for pay for other people. And I just want to point that out. I know what tools I need to buy. I'm just too cheap to buy them. I actually had a very cheap surface mount rework station, but it was actually the biggest piece of crap I ever owned. And I threw it in the dumpster because I was so fed up with it. Um, don't do what I'm doing here. Just don't do that. There are other ways 
Okay, here's the LC2 board. You'll notice it has a fully populated DRAM section. It has no second floppy port. It has a 68030 processor, but otherwise it is pretty much the same damn thing. Um, a few differences. Okay. U89. UB9, sorry. UB9. It's right here. It's a little harder to get to on this board, but I'm prepared for the challenge. Let's uh, juice it up. In the process of removing UB9 off of the LC2 board, I actually ended up tearing off two pads, but it's okay. According to the schematic, those two pads don't do anything. Um, they actually don't go anywhere. There are no tracers visible, and I did, again, confirm with the schematic they are not used. So no problems there. Let's move on. Now, what you see here, I've already removed the microphone jack, which made it, which made it easier to access the capacitor immediately behind it. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm replacing that capacitor again because the first time I did it, uh, it didn't really come out that great. The problem was I couldn't stick the iron between the jack and the capacitor in a way that allows me to do a nice clean solder job. So now with the jack removed, I'm replacing that cap again. I could just retack the old one, but I figured I have enough of them just pop in a new one. What's the harm in that? So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. get this microphone jack in look at that beautiful what a beautiful 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 jack there we go all right i got some thicker solder to work with here All right, it's a job done. I don't know if it's well done, but it's it's done. Looking inside the uh, the old jack, there's a little window on this side here. And I'm just looking at the condition that's in. It's weird how you can these have a window into the uh, underworld here. And um, yeah, I see there's there is corrosion in this sucker, but um, 
Yeah. All right. Um, so let's uh, just make sure I got everything here. I'm going to take a little pick and just make sure none of these. After seeing that rather, uh, let's just call it interesting solder job that I did there. Um, I'm sure you guys are salivating at the notion that this won't work. And you're probably right. But let's try it anyway. I mean, what the hell? Alright, we're gonna hooked up. Here we go. Okay, well, we didn't lose our audio output. That's a positive. Squeaky chair. smell smoke yet. Best not to get too cocky though, because you know, I, I, this could be an embarrassing failure. On camera, and I'm going to upload the footage anyway because I feel like um, it, honesty with my, being honest with my supporters is uh, better than not. That's your failures and your successes, remember that. Alright. Well, we didn't kill the machine, so if nothing else, you know, we may just not have solved the problem. We'll find out once I open the microphone recording thingy. Alright. We did not fix the problem. We absolutely did not fix the problem. Let's play it back. Well, okay, we did not fix it. Now there's just nothing but silence. That's not always a bad, oh. No, I had it in the right port. Okay. At least we don't have the static noise. Got headphones here, and there's nothing. Absolutely nothing coming out of that port. <sighs> well, okay. We didn't lose anything, that's, that's the important part. But it did not work. It was not a success. So in conclusion, we have no conclusion. What we have here, now I, Again, I'm a novice at reading schematics. Um, this was sent to me by the Tech Knight. Um, and uh, I'm looking at UB9 here. This is this is what we replaced. We replaced UB9 and we replaced a capacitor in this region. UB9 um, only uses six pins. Pin 1 and pin 8 are dropped, as is the schematic confirms. So, we pretty much did everything right. My surface mount soldering skills could use some help, but I've confirmed that everything is apparently kosher with the connectivity of that part. Um, I checked it. I checked every leg to make sure that it was making contact, and it is. Um, there is something else going on here. Like I said, we solved one problem, and that was static on the uh, microphone line. It's no longer doing that. But did we make it worse, or did we improve something? Did we fix something and then break something else? Um, I don't know. I don't know why the jack failed in the first place. I attributed it to leaky caps at first, and that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, I may end up sending this board out or just buying another LC2 board. I mean, LC2s by themselves are not expensive. Um, it would probably be cheaper for me to find another board. I should have checked the LC board to see if it functioned. 
in in hindsight, that would have been a smart thing to do. Um, because if it also had microphone issues, yeah, I probably should have checked. But I didn't. Um, I, I don't know what the problem is at this point. I don't know if somebody blew the port out for some reason by accident. I don't see any physical damage here. Um, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know where to go from here. I'm not missing any capacitors. I've checked. Like Maybe I forgot to put one in, but that does not seem to be the case. I guess I don't know. I don't know. They're all oriented properly. I did double check, triple check that. Um, and after checking the schematic for resistors that should be checked to see if they're open circuited or anything, um, I, I did check a bunch of them and they all seem fine. So I really don't know where to go from here. I'm seeking advice. If anyone has any ideas, let me know.